Hi students, welcome back to Appleby Academy's classes. So in this video, we are going to discuss about MM approach, which is a very important capital structure theory. You can see that uh, for the pre for the current exam, that is for December 2021 and June 2022 cycle, for comma students, it is for uh, that was held on 14th October, shift one. You can see a question directly from this particular area, and that is actually about uh, identifying the assumptions related to MM approach. Okay, so after having an idea related to MM approach and various assumptions related to this we will uh, we can just answer this question okay so let's start with the topic so before going to mm approach you should know what is a capital structure uh, what are the capital structure theories and all so first of all what do you mean by a capital structure see here we have the definition of gestenberg capital structure of a company refers to the composition or makeup of its capitalization and it includes all long term capital resources such as loans reserves shares and bonds so uh, here we have the definition of gestenberg anyway capital structure refers to it's a combination okay it's a combination of fund that means we know that we are actually first of all estimating how much fund we required for uh, our business so for the process of estimating the quantum of funds which you need is considered as capitalization that particular process is known as capitalization and what do you mean by this capital structure how you are going to collect your required amount using various sources okay how much you are going to depend on debt or how much you are going to uh, depend on your equity like a way that the proportion is actually uh, mentioned in a capital structure okay so we'll say in simple term that it is a makeup of capitalization how you are collecting the required fund from various resources and here you can use a number of resources like you can go for a preference shares equity shares retained earnings debentures bonds etc okay so this capital structure and the leverage decisions all these are coming under uh, financing decision of a company okay it's a part of financing decision that how much uh, about de determining about the proportion and determining about the types of a security that means for which all securities that you are going to use for raising your fund and it's it's a case of a security how much you're going to uh, raise your fund from a particular security or from a particular sources okay so the type of security and the relative proportion of a each type of security if you're saying that the one of the type that you're going to use for your uh, financing that is debt then how much okay like 50 percent or 60 percent that you're going to depend on your uh, debt financing like a way that you should arrange or you should find other proportion also which is also a part of capital structure decision okay and when you're considering your capital structure is optimal you know to become you know to have your capital structure at an optimum point you should uh, take or you should consider the structure where the total cost the overall cost of capital is a minimum okay so when you are selecting various proportion and uh, by considering the various uh, weighted average cost of capital of the different sources then you can say that it's a situation of a optimum capital structure where your weighted average cost of capital that means the total cost of capital is a minimum you will call them as optimum capital structure and now you're coming to the theories of capital structure so in case of theories of capital structure uh, the different proponents or the different authors is actually explaining whether the decision related to capital structure is relevant or not or that is going to make any effect on a overall cost of capital or value of the firm so anyway the different authors have different opinion as they are uh, depicted it through their approaches so anyway the major four approaches that you need to study uh, for capital structure theories are net income approach net operating income approach traditional approach moding lani miller approach so today we will be discussing about this approach that is moding lani miller approach so in case of moding lani miller approach actually we have two situation one is in the absence of tax and the second situation is where we are actually assuming taxes present okay so anyway we will be having a look over the first one that is mm approach in the absence of tax okay so it is a case where the tax is not considered so we'll consider this type of uh, mm approach as the theory of irrelevance theory of irrelevance theory of irrelevance means uh, the capital structure decisions are not relevant for the valuation of the 
firm. So when you're just making a comparison with the other approach, you can actually connect this particular approach with the net operating income approach because net operating income is also an approach which is a irrelevant, okay, or which also says that capital structure decisions are a irrelevant okay so what do you mean by the term irrelevancy that means uh, whether you are increasing your debt proportion or whether you are going to decrease your debt proportion in the capital structure it is not going to make any change in the overall cost of capital and also for the value of the firm okay going to discuss the assumptions which are considered as the base for developing MM approach. So the first one that it, there are no taxes that was the basic uh, assumption which he included in his first approach. Then the second one is that there is a perfect ma capital market or there is, there is a situation of perfect capital market is there and all the investors are rational and uh, they have all the information related to the a company or what all things which is happening within the organization like a way that they can take intelligent decisions. Then the expected earnings of all the firms have identical risk characteristics are same. So the expected earnings of all firms are uh, which is taking uh, similar risk are same. Okay. Then there are no flotation costs. Then what about the dividend payout ratio? 100 percentage dividend payout ratio is considered there. That means uh, the complete earnings of the company is distributed among its shareholders as dividend. They are not going to uh, retain any of their profits in the business. Then the cutoff point of investment is uh, in a firm is its capitalization rate. So the cutoff rate is considered as the capitalization rate itself and transaction cost is not there. And the risk associated with the personal leverage and corporate leverage are assumed to be same. As we know that the leverage capacity or the debt capacity of a person as an individual and a corporate as an entity is different. But even though his major one of the major assumption was like that. Okay, that means which is quite the risk is uh, similar. Okay, so 
based on all these assumptions he assumed that uh, in case of like if you're making a decision relating to capital structure it is not going to make any change in the overall cost of capital or the value of the firm so he also used an a process like arbitrage process to explain his theory so we know that arbitrage process is a process where a particular person or you can say that it's a process where you are selling a product uh, which is of lower cost from one market and you are selling it to a market where the price is high for the same product so like a process like like a practice we are we are just considering the as a arbitrage process that means an act of buying an asset or security in one market having low price and selling it in the another market that have higher price that means in market a you you need to pay only 5 rupees for that particular product and you are taking it and you are selling in market b where the price of its product the same product is 10 that's a situation so Uh, so this modding line he Miller he assumed that so if you are doing this practice again and again at a point both these price of the market will become equal okay so after a particular period you are doing you are practicing this again and again that means you are taking the products from the lower priced market to the high priced market so you are doing this practice continuously after a point of time both the price of this market will be for the for the same product will be equal okay so that's what he used to uh, explain his mm approach here also the consequences of such action is that the market price of the securities of two firms exactly similar in all respect except in the capital structure cannot remain different in different market for a long period so he used the same concept here arbitrage process the same concept here so he said that two firms like firm a and firm b and just the only difference between both these firms are firm a have debt in their capital structure and firm b have no such uh, debt in their capital structure they are only using equity so the only difference between this firm a and b is in uh, the, the difference in their capital structure where one firm use debt and the firms is not at all using debt that is the only difference between these two firms rather uh, their uh, the, the the way they are conducting business the nature of production everything is same so in that sense after a particular period what will happen the, the market price of both these firms will become same okay so that what he explained here i will just repeat it again the consequences of such action is that the market price of the securities of two firm exactly similar in all respect there is only difference that is in case of capital structure which cannot remain different in different market for a long period so that is not going to make a long term effect after a particular period both these firms will have similar uh, market price okay that's the situation mentioned here now we are coming back to the question so which of the following assumptions form the basis of mm hypothesis in stating irrelevance of capital structure regarding weighted average cost of capital remain constant so let's see the first situation perfect capital market we know that in case of mm hypothesis there is a perfect capital market is existing there so you can actually go for option a option a should be there and you just you can just check okay so option b c d in, in all these options a is there but which is not there in case of option a so you can eliminate the first option and it can be uh, any of these options like it can be b c or a d coming back to the second one heterogeneous risk class no we assume that there is a homogeneous risk okay heterogeneous means there is difference in case of risk by the different persons but here so it is mentioned mentioned here that heterogeneous but we know that there is homogeneous risk that was his assumption so b should not be there so a should be there and b is a wrong assumption so uh, okay so in both these options you can say that b, option b is there okay there is only one option which have option a and which is not including option b like a way that you can directly go for option b even though we will just go with the other options also absence of taxes yes taxes is not there so a should be there c should be there full dividend payout yes dividend payout ratio is 100% so a c d what about uh, e uh, same expectation of firms ebit with which to evaluate the value of the firm so we know that the ebit or the return expected by similar firms are quite same so e should be there so a c d and e so except b you can include all other or all others are the assumptions related to mm approach so a c d e so the correct answer for this question is option b a c d e 
So in this video, we discussed about MM approach and as you can see that we already referred a question uh, from the same area which got asked for December 2021 and June 2022 merge cycle. So this particular topic like capital structure theory is a very important topic as I already mentioned you several times in uh, different videos. We already discussed about the various questions related to capital structure theories and also the different the types of theories also. So I hope this video will help you for your preparation. Thank you and happy learning.